My name is Dr Linda Isles. I'm a forensic pathologist here at the Victorian Institute of Forensic Medicine. We have around 6,000 deceased persons come through these doors each year. So not everyone in Victoria who dies has to come here, but those who fall under the coroner's jurisdiction do. And so they are deaths that are unnatural or uh, unexplained. When they're admitted, they're taken through here to have a full body postmortem CT scan. And this is a piece of information that we use uh, to inform the decision about which is the most appropriate level of medical legal and death investigation to give the coroner the information that they require. So after the coroner has made a determination that an autopsy will be undertaken, the deceased person is taken into the autopsy suite and we have a couple of different areas where an autopsy might take place. Uh, this first room here is one of our special autopsy suites. Uh, we call this the homicide room. So this is the room that autopsies are undertaken that are of a suspicious nature uh, because they uh, more often than not require police attendance at the autopsy. So this room, uh, we can seal it off from everywhere else. Uh, it's important to obviously minimise traffic in this area and avoid DNA contamination and that's what this room is designed for. Uh, so this is one of the largest uh, autopsy suites in the world and we also have the advantage here uh, at VIFM of being co-located with the Coroner's Court of Victoria. Uh, so having the coroner and the coroner's staff on site um, means that we can have direct communication with, with their office because there are a number of special tests that need to be done after the autopsy in, in order to be able to come up with a final report and give final advice to the coroner. So not only do we have forensic pathologists, forensic technical staff and forensic photographers who work with us here in the mortuary, but we have a team of super specialists uh, including forensic odontologists, a forensic anthropologists and a forensic entomologist who help us with cases in which the remains of the deceased might be particularly decomposed. One thing that the coroner must determine is the identity of that person. So there are several ways in which the coroner will do that, uh, but one of those mechanisms is by an identification by the family. So if that's deemed appropriate, then that process takes place in this room here, where our families can come and view their loved one if they would like to or if they need to do that. Our autopsy technicians are very skilled and take a lot of pride in ensuring uh, that the families can view their loved one if at all possible. And once the coroner is satisfied with the identification of that deceased person, uh, they can authorise their release. And at that point, the coroner admissions and inquiries will either liaise with family or funeral director uh, and lets them know that everything's been completed and their loved one um, can be returned to them. So even though some people think that the autopsy is the end of the story, it's really actually only the beginning.